Hi, and welcome to a really quick episode of Film Recommendations. Uh, so, uh, this week's um, film that I'm recommending is a really obscure one that I had never heard of, but I kind of stood to reason was probably out there somewhere. And that is Sabata, starring Lee Van Cleef. And it came out in 1970. Now, this is one of those spaghetti westerns you hear about uh, as a genre. And it's good, but it's weird. I mean, it's really weird. Uh, Lee Van Cleef plays the title character, Sabata. And literally, when I tuned in to watch this, I, he's riding into town. Um, and three guys up in a building are, you know, standing in an office. One's looking out the window, sees him, and calls to the others, Sabata! And then dramatic music plays. So it's like, okay, coming in on the movie like that, how could I resist but watch the rest? Uh, the description for the cable channel I was watching listed it as saying that um, Sabata had some wacky sidekicks. Uh, the wacky sidekicks consist of Karincha, a fat alcoholic Civil War veteran who hurls knives at people between rants about the dullness of civilian life and the worthlessness of metals, the majority of his sentences ending in insane laughter. That's taken from Wikipedia. Um, personally, I actually found his character to be kind of a noble brute. Um, he's a simple man of simple taste. He likes a good drink, a good smoke. Um, he isn't especially clean, but he's honest and fair. Uh, and so he makes a good uh, helper to Sabata. And Karincha has a partner that uh, he works with named Alley Cat, who is supposed to be a Native American, but uh, is clearly, you know, uh, I'm I'm gonna say Italian since these are spaghetti westerns. Um, the uh, it, the character of Alley Cat is actually pretty cool because he jumps and leaps around um, all over the place doing acrobatic feats, and uh, in this way, uh, Karincha is able to uh, do a lot of the heavy fighting while Alley Cat kind of jumps and maneuvers around. So they make a very formidable duo. Uh, Sabata is is really uh, a brilliant strategist. Apparently he was a general in the Civil War and Karincha fought um, with him. Um, now they have to fight um, uh, uh, these three guys who are um, who are who are leaders uh, in what town is it? Uh, I mean, it's not really important, but if I'm going to be referring to it, I should have the name. Well, it's not jumping out at me. Anyway, the bad the main bad guy's name is Stengel, and he leads uh, these guys named Ferguson and Judge O'Hara. And Stengel is a bit of a unique character, very much a European archetype of a character, uh, where he's well off, um, he's essentially no the local nobility. Um, he owns land, he owns a mansion, he has men that work his ranch, uh, he's able to uh, live off of that land and not do any work, and instead devote himself to uh, you know, what he considers very strange forms of um, of combat. Anyway, so he is not sub he is not Sabata's equal because um, uh, Stengel's skills mostly rely in trickery. 
Uh, a good example is his main weapon, which is a uh, which is a uh, deadly dart that launches from his cane with a trigger that you know plunges into you and you die. Right? Well, uh, like Sabata has some kind of tricks like that, but with Sabata you always kind of know that. You know, you see it coming. He doesn't strike uh, when you're not suspecting it. He kind of faces his enemies head on. Um, he has a trick gun that has four barrels, and it, it shoots, um, you know, I guess it's like four shots, and then um, it's a small gun, so it's easy to handle and conceal, and then uh, in the handle are three more barrels with three additional smaller shots, and he's able to aim them quite well. He's also able to use uh, a Winchester rifle very well, and so he's able to, uh, he's a very formidable opponent in this way because he can kill you at close combat or at a distance, and he's really good. Um, now, all of that being said, uh, I think that that uh, these elements alone are interesting enough, but then uh, Stengel actually sort of shrewdly, very very secretively hires um, a desperado who's familiar with Tabata and has some trust with him by the name of Banjo. Now, I watched an episode of Bob's Burgers um, on Fox in which um, Bob's character, you know, Bob was obsessed with this lone gunman uh, character of the Old West named Banjo. And I'm guessing that this is where they got it from, was the Sabata character. Because Sabata, as it turns out, actually was in uh, a trilogy of films, and this was kind of the first one. Uh, apparently the... Um, Italian name translates to, hey buddy, that's Sabata, you're finished. Um, I, I'm just looking at what the, the man with gun sight eyes comes to kill is uh, kind of the subtitle on the DVD. Um, but you know, it's not really important. Um, the point is, Sabata is a bit of a badass, right? Well, uh, Banjo is treated really dramatically like uh, a badass as well. Uh, and Banjo's trick is that he has a specially modified rifle that fits uh, into his banjo. So he'll be walking along, playing his banjo, looking perfectly harmless and innocent, and then uh, he'll, you know, if you shoot at him or, or he'll point it at you and you won't see the rifle that's inside of it and you're dead. Um, now, some guys actually come looking for Banjo and he kills him dead and, you know, these are some bad dudes that uh, were looking for him, so hey, all right. Banjo's a hero. Um, Tabata offers him a job because the whole thing that kicks off the intrigue is that uh, the three guys led by Stengel I mentioned uh, plotted a fake bank robbery that uh, was going to be their excuse to bankrupt the town so that everybody moved away because they didn't have any more money to invest there. Um, and then they could sell the land to the railroad uh, after buying the land out from under them, presumably with their own bank funds, which is really pretty dastardly. Um, so anyway, uh, Sabata comes to put a stop to that and finds out that uh, they're responsible for it, and then uh, he blackmails them. So Sabata is actually doing something evil 
to the bad men, to, to the bad guys. And, of course, they don't like that, so they send for killers and offer to pay them 100000 whereas Sabato's only blackmailing them for 60000 because uh, they just want Sabata out of the way. Well, uh, Banjo gets word of this, and when he goes with Sabata and Karincha and Alley Cat to collect uh, the blackmail money, uh, with pay offered to Banjo and the others, um, Banjo turns around and betrays Sabata, um, which leads to a very tense gunfight that isn't quite over yet. Um, when uh, Banjo, uh, when he kind of tells Banjo to go away, then uh, you know Sabata and his two loyal friends go and plot to get Stengel and his guy and you know expose them for what they are and uh, get the money that Sabata wants and everything the money that um, you know that Stengel was stealing so I mean it, it doesn't exactly make sense the plot is weird the characters are weird you know Banjo is way over the top, you know, and a total prick. Um, the ending is actually pretty satisfying, uh, but weird. Uh, the whole film is very weird. It's very Italian. And that's one of the things about these spaghetti westerns that is why I am bringing up Sabata as a film. It's, they're weird. We all know about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, oh, what else is it? Um, a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more. Uh, the whole Man with No Name series. It's just kind of a weird um, genre of film because by this point, the American Western had died out. And what happened was Spaghetti Westerns took over and gained a cult following because in some cases they were weird or bad or the dubbing was terrible, but they were able to get these big name Western actors like Clint Eastwood and Lee Van Cleef and cast them in these leading man parts. They would go and film it in Spain or North Africa or whatnot, um, or in some cases in Mexico and other areas, I think. And, you know, they'd be able to produce these uh, films as, like, whole series of films inside of, um, you know, a month to a year. You know, they'd have the scripts all lined up. They'd pump them out, and uh, the Italians would eat them up. The, the European audiences would enjoy them to a large degree. And they would sell big in America because, you know, you could, the, 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 it, it had a draw. And since then, they've had a bit of a cult following because uh, they get shown on TV a lot, um, kind of as a, as a cheap afternoon thing that they didn't have to pay a lot of rights on um, in order to show it. And it's like, hey, well, it has these great actors. Later on, Clint Eastwood, of course, went on to do Dirty Harry and a number of other great films. Um, and uh, Lee Van Cleef, unfortunately, kind of faded into the into the uh, sidelines. Uh, his biggest claim to fame uh, in the 80s was being a, a, a star on a failed uh, TV show, a co-star, uh, called Master Ninja, which was then turned into... They, they turned the first few episodes into um, into uh, a couple of movies that they released, and uh, you'll probably have seen them uh, on the MST3K episodes, Master Ninja 1 and Master Ninja 2, uh, and it's just hilarious um, to see, because Lee Van Cleef is actually a pretty interesting actor. He, he plays uh, Sabata very well in this film. Uh, you like Sabata. You're rooting for him 
even though Safada isn't necessarily a good guy, he's sort of on his own. So he's a very romantic figure, kind of facing against the elements in, in society that aren't really interested in the people's well-being anyway. Um, so, I don't know. Check it out. Uh, 1970 uh, is when the film came out. 1969 in Italy. 1970 in the U.S. Uh, literally a year later. Uh, it runs 102 minutes. Uh, it's dubbed in English pretty well. It's just a weird movie, but it's surprisingly fun and funny. And I think that, um, that a lot of people watching this uh, will get a kick out of Sabata. So that's it for this episode of Film Recommendations. Bye-bye.